come on in, welcome to my home, so you want to buy a slow cooker. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, off the bat, that I have a ridiculous amount of slow cookers. I'm also going to tell you right now, off the bat, that I use most of them. Yeah. Now, if you're interested in a slow cooker, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, how often are you going to use it? And if you're like me, you're going to use it about once a week at least. Now, then the next thing is, what size should you get? I'm going to tell you when I bought my first slow cooker, which is the largest one, I erred on the size of buying the largest one, and that was the right choice, because believe it or not, that's the one that we use the absolute most. Um, the other three, two, three, yeah, you'll see them in pictures or in videos. Uh, we don't use as often, or at all sometimes, <laughs> simply because uh, the medium-sized one, while it's very nice, it's still a medium size, and I rarely ever use it. The small ones we do use for things like dips and that sort of thing, but other than that, we almost never, ever use those. I did find the small one works really well for um, fondue. You can do your fondue uh, cheese and that really easy, but you have to think about, are you going to use this on a regular basis? Is it Because it, it's one of those things, they're big, they're bulky, they take up a lot of space, but they do let you do things like, you can take sometimes the roughest cut of meat, like beef roast and those sort of things, and put them in your slow cooker, slow cook them, and you get the most tender and wonderful a roast. In fact, I don't know if the recipe has come out yet, but there is a recipe coming out for a uh, roast, which I think you will enjoy. The smaller things I found, like I said, it, we use them more for like uh, dips, things that we want to keep warm, and you're like, well, why don't you just get rid of those? Well, the thing is, we really do use those for dips and the things that we want to keep warm. I do use all of my slow cookers all the time, but remember, and that's what I want to stress this, remember, I am doing a video, I do these videos weekly, so sometimes I have three and four slow cookers going on at the same time to get other things done. And when we have company, they're also really nice so that, well, when we had company, uh, they were also really nice to keep uh, foods hot when we were serving and those sort of things. But the slow cooker is something, when you look at this, the first thing that I look at is can the actual, uh, the actual cooking vessel be taken out to clean? I think that's very important because these tiniest one, the tiniest ones that we have does not come out. It's attached to it. It is the hardest thing on the face of this planet to clean, and I'm always worried that I'm going to get the cooking elements uh, wet and it will short circuit it, so that is something to think about. How easy is it to clean? Are you going to have to get a toothbrush down in there to get every little nook and cranny? Can it go into the dishwasher? Some of these can actually go into the dishwasher, some cannot. Uh, that is something to really look at, and how heavy is this? If you do not have the upper arm strength, and a lot of you are going, why well, my arm strength is fine, but some people do not. These can get really heavy, and if they're already heavy, and you're putting in a chicken or a roast, and you're trying to lift it, take it to other places, that's the thing. Is it portable? I have seen ones that have rubber straps with them, so you can strap them down and take them with you. That's always handy to have. Does it have a long cord? Why do I say that? Because there's when we use our um, smallest ones for the cheese for our fondue, we do the fondue at the table, but the cords are really, really short, and we have to get an extension cord to run to the table. That becomes its own problem. The biggest thing is still cleaning. Can you clean it up easily? Now, and the next thing to think about is, does it have a variable heat setting? That's important. If you do only, can only have one temperature, you need to think about that because there have been times when I need to cook a roast really quickly, so I'll turn it on high, and then other times where I want to cook whatever it is overnight even, and so I'll put it on low and let it just nice and slow cook, and that just is just wonderful. 
if you only have one temperature setting, you only have one temperature setting. On my largest one, I even have a nice warm setting, so it can then just keep the items warm. I've found that having adjustable temper set, temperature settings makes it so much easier to get my to make it versatile because that way I don't have to think about well you know I'm going to have to unplug it and let it cool down for a while. Tem I can just adjust the temperature as needed. And some recipes even specifically call for high, low, warm, depending upon the recipe. And that is one of the big things about this. Cleaning, temperature, is it portable? Those are things you really need to think about. And then, of course, my biggest one, which I always remind people of, do you have the ability to store it? If you do not have the ability to store your uh, slow cooker somewhere, don't, don't get a slow cooker. Because if you have to leave it somewhere where you can never get it, guess what? You're never going to use it. Now my slow cooker is not stored in my kitchen. It's actually stored in this room in a cabinet right over there. Uh, because I don't use it all the time, but when I do use it, it is handy. I can get to it. Mom uses it so she can come over here and get it and go with it. And it, she says it's not that he too, not too heavy for her to actually move it around. I think that's really cool. I hope she, I know she thinks it's really cool. And that makes our lives a little bit easier. What about you? Are you interested in getting a slow cooker? Now, I have all of mine linked down below in the description with my affiliate links. Uh, you can tell me what kind of slow cookers that you are interested in. And you notice I said slow cooker. It does not have to be one specific slow cooker. The thing I do not have is I do no, I no longer have the instant pot or the uh, electronic uh, pressure cooker. I just didn't find the need for it. I did not use it. And I think I like the flavor. I like the... I, I'm never in that big of a rush that I need to have a pressure cooker like that. So, yeah, I, I, while I had it, I enjoyed it, but when it push came to shove, and as I've said before, my space is super limited here. When push came to shove, uh, that had to go away so that I would have room for other things. Well, let me know what you thought about that down in the description, down in the comment below, and I'd like to hear what you have, how you use it, that'd be really cool. You can check out these other videos that I picked out just for you, and I hope I get to see you the next time you stop by.